Hello, spooky friends, and welcome to another episode of Storytime with the Scariest Podcast. Woo! I'm Rowan Grace, and this is Adam Diaz. Hello. And we're here to read some scary stories, some In- homegrown horrors Indeed with you we folks. Are. Adam, what is a homegrown horror? A homegrown horror is uh, one of those stories that you folks send us, which is supernatural, spiritual, uh, sometimes scary because it's like true crime stuff, sometimes coincidental where it's just really funny because it turns out nothing was actually happening, you just... Uh, got the wit scared out of you and it was uh, just a big old coincidence so depending on what those are uh, it doesn't really matter you can send them in to us robin where can they send them you can send them to storytime at scarish.com or at all our social media outlets so facebook twitter instagram we've gotten a few from instagram lately which is cool yeah you can also go to our website scarish.com oh, yeah, you mentioned that i think chestnut. click on contact us fill out that form it comes directly to us which is always super fun before we get into any of our stories for the evening, of which we will have four, I want to address something that is very uh, important to me, something we brought up on a previous podcast, something we uh, asked our listeners to reach out to us and talk to us about, and the outpouring of support in regards <laughs> to the jizz trees has oh been God. incredible. So many folks reached out and they're like, there are trees that smell like fucking jizz. Yeah. And I've smelled them my whole life because I go here or here or here. So many folks on campuses. One of the guys I work with was like, my apartment complex has jizz trees. We always called them cum trees before this. And I'm like, see, I am not crazy. Robin's not crazy. So I just want to personally thank you so that we can finally start talking about this serious issue out in the open Hashtag stop planting stop mysteries. Stop planting them. Stop they just stink. And if they're great for bees or whatever, okay, I get it. I can deal. But if they're not, if they're in any way, shape, or form just normal trees, pick a different tree. Because it just Someone smells gross. Someone posted that they're like a type of fruit or something. I don't know what they are, except they smell like jizz. So it's been nice. I had people at work being like, hashtag jizz trees. Like, I know what you're talking about. And it was just like really enriching to my day. People were reaching out to us on all our social media. Yeah. like straight up. I know exactly what you're really talking about. I was really surprised by how many people actually brought it up. This is like one of the biggest outpourings of support we've had since like team fan, team no fan. We didn't divide anyone. We just all united to say we hate trees that smell like jizz. So it's been a really good experience. It brought us all closer together. And uh, just we should we should have a website called jizztrees.com oh my where God. we have it's like a GPS locator. And uh, anywhere you go, you can be warned like, hey, you're going to Town Square in Las Vegas. There are jizz trees there. So just be prepared. <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> okay. If jizztrees.com anyway. isn't already taken, I'm going to look into that as soon as the show ends tonight. Uh, but yeah, who's going to be reading their story first, Robin? Um, you can read first. Okay. I will go first. And this first one's subject is can read on podcast. Solid. That's how you do it, folks. It starts out like this. Hello, Robin and Adam, or Adam and Robin. Either way. Hello. Hello. It's Lindsay again, and I love your podcast. Oh, thank, thank you. you. A while ago, like last year, you did a story about twins, and then you asked your audience if they have if they have their own twin story. So here I am to tell you about my twin experience. Why are you smirking like that? I'm not allowed to smile and never do it again. I don't know. You twerked, you twerked your... <laughs> cheek like went up when i said twin experience so i can't twerk in my seat but you know right you on. get the picture <laughs> uh in parentheses says in case i forgot to mention i have a twin named lisa so it's lysa i'm gonna go with lisa because i think that's the way you're gonna say this all right so i will tell you about being an identical twin what so not fraternal this is identical twins oh wow that's really rare it is rare did you have another thought no i was gonna say what if it's lissa like from Game of Thrones. That's why I went with Lisa, because Lisa was pretty messed up in that show. Oh, okay. So, if it is Lisa, hey, take back that name. Make it less weird, because that chick was definitely weird. All right. The email goes on to say, before I do, I would just like to inform you that I'm on my phone and dyslexic, so mistakes are bound to happen. Sorry. So, shout out to Spooky Mom, who edits these. She said these were good. All right. It says, twin things is the first section. All right. Your mouth started to open like you were going to say something, so no, that's why I I'm pausing again. I just took in a breath. Sorry. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Just hurry up. Just hurry up? Just read your shit. It's your attitude with the show? No, Jeez, just having... read. Stop focusing on my face and my breathing. I'm just waiting for visual cues to let me know that you have something you'd like to interject because I don't want to talk over you. What do pilots do? You think they're like cheering when they're dropping bombs or something? Like, yeah. Well, that's what they do in Pearl Harbor. Oh, God. Have you okay. ever seen that movie? I'm getting back to this email. Right. I have never seen that movie and what? I don't have any intention of ever it's watching it. It's such a bad movie. There's a song dedicated from Team America World Police to how bad Pearl Harbor was. <laughs> was as a movie <laughs> apropos of nothing so they just put those lyrics in there to remind everyone that pearl harbor sucked it's a good movie team america not pearl harbor okay i'm oh gonna get back God. to email now 
I'm taking all that shit out. Maybe. I might just leave it in. It sounded kind of funny, actually. Oh, oh, my God. So, twin thing. So, I am the youngest. And while we look the same and act similar, we are completely different. I like to sometimes do myself up, and she has to be forced to. She went to college, and I went straight to work. You get the picture, of course. We're like the same show most of the time. I we like the same shows most of the time. I.e., Supernatural, Charmed, Nine One One, Scaryish. I think that's just growing up together. You kind of enjoy the same stuff. So, like right. my sister and I will watch Hol- Hallmark together, and and uh, I mean she doesn't like anime, but we'll watch a bunch of romance movies, and we'll watch um, stupid kids movies, and and like Disney movies, things like that. But we don't like. I don't watch all the country stuff she watches. I don't want. I mean, there's just some things. It's so, understandable. Before I move on, I do want to go ahead and give a shout out because uh, I just realized that there are some shout outs that needed to be given here. Uh, one, I want to shout out folks that followed us while we were not on the air. Uh, Dim Sunny, Brain Noodles 12, and Caddy Cat followed us uh, over the previous week. And uh, Jaxie Babe, during the intro, actually, resubscribed for the eighth month. And the message was, I totally forgot to resub, but I'm back. Jaxie Babes and I say hello. And we missed our spooky friends. We missed you, too. Thank you for joining us. Also, shout out to Betty Bang, who subscribed over on YouTube. Interesting name. I like it. We'll just call you Betty. Okay. (laughs) All right. Getting back to the email. So they like the same shows, but they're very different people. People always ask us the same thing about being twin slash twin powers. Questions like, are you guys twins? The answer, of course, is yes. And now it's going to be like Q&A from now on in this email, which is kind of fun. Questions like, When's your birthday slash how old are you? Turns to other twin. When's your birthday slash how old are you? <laughs> they ask us together at the same time. Just so you know, this emoticon is not like a laughing emoticon. It's like the side eyes and the frowny emoticon. It's like, geez, people, get your shit together. The answer is always same day and age while trying not to give the are you stupid look. <laughs> Questions like, do you feel each other's pain? <laughs> and their answers are only because I'm causing That's it. That's cute. That is funny. Uh, questions like, can you read each other's thoughts? The answer of which is realistically no, but because we hang out together a lot, we get each other, i.e. BFFs or Lisa likes Sam Winchester slash Alphonse Elric. Do you know who that is? Full Metal Alchemist. Ah. Get your shit together. And I'm like Dean Winchester slash Edward Elric, though I know it should be reversed. Me being younger, but I'm the one writing this. That's funny. Also questions like, do you have your own language? Answer, our mother said that we did when we were little, but no. That's awesome. That's super interesting. Yeah. Uh, so they do when they're little, you but no. kind of just grow out of it, you know? Yeah, I think so. Uh, in parentheses, and I think we did, but as time passes, we started to forget. We would just make sounds up. So when the other translated, we'd nod our heads like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I meant. You know me so well, twin sister. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, and the email wraps up. So basically, my sister and I got jibbed out of being a twin. Seriously, no twin powers, no telekinesis or telepathy, nothing but a girl who looks like me <laughs> and gets the same gifts as me because everybody's too lazy to pick something individually Rude. out. That that's is a, horseshit. Yeah, that's a crap gift. You guys got I mean, screwed on yeah. that. I have a friend who was born December 25th. Or no, no, I'm sorry. December 24th. His name is also Nicholas. He was born December 24th. And I always ask him, like, do you get, like, one gift? And it's called, like... Is that like, why he's named Nicholas? I don't think so. I think he's actually named after his uncle. Oh, okay. Um, but I always ask him, like, do you only get, like, one gift? And, like, it's your Christmas and birthday gift. He's like, no. Nah, if they did that, like, I would have ran away. <laughs> <laughs> so, just saying. Whoever's dating him now or dates him in the future or marries him or whatever, don't do that to him. He's too good of a guy. All right, (laughs) finishing this off. So that is my twin information that I wanted to give you. Nothing scary except looking at her in the face sometimes. Nothing creepy, nothing paranormal, just boring. Except one time there are two other sets of twins and all three sets of twins that's including my sister and I were born five minutes apart. Wow. Next time I will write to you about her homegrown horror because she used to work at an assisted living place. Keep on creeping on. Love, Lindsay. Well, Lindsay, nice. thank you so much yeah, for sending that in. thank you. We both have twins in our family. Yeah. Your cousin, or cousins, obviously. I don't obviously, think they're identical, though. Are they, they fraternal? I don't, well, I mean, they're two boys. What, what's fraternal? It means they're not identical, but they're twins. Oh, they, I mean, they yeah, they look very similar. Um, if you don't ever hang out with them and you meet them for the first time together, you think they're they're identical, but they're not. You, hmm. The more you hang out with them, you notice differences. The more you know. Did you see the rainbow today? No, I it was, was a huge rainbow. I didn't today. leave my building all day. Well, we I, this, I work in an office. I I don't leave. <laughs> I work in an office as well. We just have windows. Oh, I don't have windows. <laughs> so yeah, we had this inf- we had this meeting where we gave out all this information to a bunch of people, and we came out, and there's this giant window, 
there was this huge rainbow <laughs> going across the outside. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so pretty. I was like, it's because we just got out of that informational meeting. The more you know. <laughs> and everyone's, I don't know, it was a good joke. It landed really well there. Robin's looking at me like I should go fuck myself. <laughs> All right. Let's do pussycat. So I, I have twins in my family, too. They are fraternal, so they're not identical. Um, but they do have things that are like kind of similar, similar to the email we just got. I don't know if they had like their own language or can feel each other's pain. I think they have intuition about what the other person is going through, even if they're not around them, you know? Yeah. So that's also something that's super interesting. If there are more twins out there and you're listening to this, send us an email. I really want to know. Uh, all right. So I'm going to get into my email here. And this is from Jess Jess from Instagram. I love that. It's so cute. Um, Just so you know, David asked, is Robin really a Cowboys fan? I'm she from is. Texas. She is indeed. Uh, and like a lot of my family are all Cowboys fans. My uh, aunt, who I adore, is a huge Cowboys fan. Like, huge. Growing up, her house is always just Cowboys everything. <laughs> and, uh, I mean... Whenever I went to my cousin's house in Texas, they'd have, like, the Mavericks on or something like that. They're just Dallas fans, you know, Um, because, I mean, we were in Texas, (laughs) Dallas-Fort Worth area, so it's going to happen. Right. It's Uh, bound to happen. Anyway. The clam over there says, go Cowboys. (laughs) Uh, All right. So this email goes, hey, Robin and Adam. What's up? Hello. You guys are great and make my work days pass by so fast. I've been binging your episodes for about maybe two months now. I don't know. My memory is shit. (laughs) Anyway, I'm on episode 44, and I've been trying to catch up to send you guys my homegrown horror, but I can't wait. I have many experiences with the paranormal, like when I was about five or six. I remember I was playing in the hallway, and then I see a shadow on my wall uh, of a man, and it was growing larger. He had a hat. You guys should really look into the hat man. All right. Is that the it's a thing? weird pause for you right there? No, no, no. I was thinking, is that the thing from The Conjuring 2? Yep, it is. That's the hat man? I know. Wait, no, it's not. The guy um, from The Conjuring 2 is like the... I can't remember what the fuck they but call him. But it's that him. big, long, dark, lanky thing, yeah. right? I don't know if that's the hat man. I know the hat man from Haunting of Hill House. He's well, the, the floating dude who has the top hat. Yeah, but that I don't think that's a specific ghost. That was just a character that lived in the house, right? Mm, I don't know. We need to look up the hat man for sure. So is it a hat man, the top hat man? I have so many questions. We'll look it up. Okay. I had a sudden feel of terror, and I just ran to my brother's door, pounded on it to, for him to let me in, screaming, tears rolling down my eyes, and since then, I've been terrified of hallways. That sucks. How, but it's Hallways so, are everywhere. Well, okay, so, houses that are built with, like, really long, narrow hallways that don't have windows or anything or open rails to um that lead down to the floor below or whatever um kind of freaked me out too because it's just this dark long stretch of space where there's really nowhere else you can go and there's nothing else to look at but doors and walls typically if you have a narrow ass hallway like that it should be because there's doors that'll lead to room so it's like yeah you might have a creepy hallway but you might also have like a nice six bedroom house you can put on the market, have the Scott brothers flip for you. That'd be pretty fucking sweet. Maybe a little bit open concept, knock down some of those walls. I don't know. Just spitballing here. Oh my god, Jonathan. Oh god. So hot. Okay. I can't anyway, he's banging Zoe Deschanel. I know. I'm so happy for that. Yeah, dude. I know he deserves it. They he both deserve, deserve it. it. They both deserve to be happy. They're so successful now. I don't know about happy, but they deserve it. All right. <laughs> what the fuck is that supposed to be? Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. Another story is from a different house. I remember we had a statue of a Native American sitting Indian style. <laughs> so you nailed it with a Native American <laughs> and then you followed it up with Indian style? I, okay. In my defense, in your defense, I should say, <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck crisscross applesauce meant until someone's like Indian style. I'm like, damn, I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know any of the alternatives to that. No, okay. And he would... He, okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me get this up. <laughs> All right. And he would move around the house... Okay. <clears throat> yeah, you're reading that in a really weird voice. <laughs> and he would move around the house randomly. My mom would ask everyone if they had moved it, and no one did. In a different house, this house was called... It was like a hell house. And when we moved in, we were informed that someone had died on the property five years before. And there was a girl who lived there that was involved in witchcraft. Uh Uh-oh. Her room was covered with writing about the devil and pentagrams and 666s everywhere. You know what the thing is about being young like that? Is it's your room. 
You know, you, you say like, this is want. my room. Stay the fuck out of my room, mom and dad, that sort of stuff. But like, you're not going to live there forever. So whatever demons you summon into that room, just being rebellious, like that's kind of a dick move. Cause either your parents are going to have to deal with it or like a little brother or sister has been dying to get out of that bunk bed forever. Or eventually that house is going to get sold. And you know, the kid with all the emotional problems is going to get stuck in that fucking room. So I'm just saying any of our young listeners out there or viewers, uh, Think before you summon demons. Do it in a public place, not in your home. So growing up in my parents' house in Hawaii, uh, our walls were all wood. There, It was just a it's really... A sauna. It was a much older house. <laughs> in um, a super humid place. Yeah, it was just all all the walls were wood. When we moved in, it, it wasn't covered in like a glaze or anything. It was just open wood. We moved in, renovated it, put in like painted all the walls so they're nice and shiny but we had our own room and we wanted to put like music band posters up and stuff like that but right. instead of sticking tacks into the actual wood the wood had gaps in between it right so we'd stick the tacks in between it so that when we pull them out you don't see There's any no holes. But yeah <laughs> so you're sticking into the grain in the uh, wood in not in the grain in the wood like the slats between each plank oh, of wood. oh i see what you're saying yeah that's really nice yeah so even as a kid we were like <laughs> be really thoughtful about what you're doing here we just had normal drywall growing up and my brother we used to go to blockbuster video or box office video back oh when my that gosh still oh, existed. are there kids alive now that have no idea what blockbuster i'm is? sure there are there's far more people alive now that don't know what that is than there are alive that know what that is not not really, but I just feel really fucking old saying that. Anyways, we used to go to the movie store, because that's how you got movies back then, and they'd have posters for all the new releases. And when like the new releases came out and you'd refresh your poster thing, they'd throw that shit away. So my brother would always tell him, like, save them for me. Like, I'll come back once a week and just give me the posters. And they did. So he had a blue room, and he covered all the walls and the ceiling with movie posters. And it was pretty awesome. And then when I got older, I realized that he was covering holes in his wall every time he got a new poster because he had an anger management problem and he loved video games. So he just punched and kicked so many holes in that fucking wall. And the day he went to college and my parents took down those posters, I could just hear my dad in the other room like, motherfucker. <laughs> and then like another 20 minutes would go by, I was like, this fucking kid. <laughs> they had to patch so many. There was a big ass one, like the size of a bowling ball. Like, someone had just thrown a bowling ball at a wall. He just hit it with his entire leg. And my dad's like, I'm not even patching it. Like, I don't even care. He was so pissed. It just stayed like that. Nice. So, yeah. Let's get back to that story. Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> so, this hell room with the pentagrams and the 666 all over it, that room was my brother's room. In that room, my brother would feel someone sit on his bed next to him, and he would see the impression of someone sitting there. It's so creepy. Another time, my sister, my mother, and I were the only ones home. We were sitting in the living room talking. Then we hear the door beads from my sister's room get whacked. Holy crap, do kids still do that? Door beads? Door beads. Oh, I'm sure they do. Really? They're out of style. I'd have door beads in a water bed right now if you'd let me. Shut up. Fuck yeah. Oh my god. Do you even know? You don't even know. You ever had a water bed? I've slept in one. I hated it. <sighs> you suck. <laughs> no class. Oh my god. So, they sit in the living room, they're talking, then they hear the door beads from my sister's room get whacked. We all look at each other and then go check, and the beads were swaying. And those beads have a very specific, and this is me talking, they have a very specific sound. So, when you hear them, it's just like all that <laughs> of all the beads, you they're know what I mean? Too. Yeah. They don't just move because the AC kicks on or anything like that. No. Um, there are many more stories from this house, and I feel like I'm going on forever. Hopefully you guys read this, and it's okay to share on the podcast. Thank you. Keep on creeping on. Love you guys. Also, sorry, I forgot this one. When we moved into the hell house, we had got the house blessed, and the pastor and everyone saw three black shadows book it from my brother's room to the front door and out into the street. Wow. That's crazy. At least they left. Slam the door behind them go, this house is yeah, clear. Yeah. And then charge double. I'd fucking charge triple. Like, you saw those three ghosts? And the person that's like, the homeowner's like, yeah. It's like, triple, bitch. Weigh me down. <laughs> Hold out your hand. Um, yeah, <laughs> those are good stories. You should tell us all the other stories yeah, you have. we want to hear them all. Yeah. Don't ever worry about an email being too long. We have an email. I shit you not. It's going to be on the next show. we got to figure out how we're going to deal with it. It is nine pages long. Well, remember when we used to split emails before? Yeah, we're, we're gonna just going to have to do it again. Here's the thing. If you want to send an email nine pages long, go for it. Make it a Word file. Yeah, make it a Word file. <laughs> the one we got is a fucking PDF. I can convert that shit. 
Because we're going to have to, like, you know, edit it or well, break it apart a little convert. bit. It's not that it's, hard. Yeah, it can, it can give you shit sometimes. I got Adobe Reader Pro. It's fine. I know, but sometimes the margins get all fucked up going from Pro to, like, where I do it in my job all the time. Uh, but I'm just saying, make it a word file. Just let us edit that shit, bro. That's all I'm saying. Because I'm going to send that shit to Spooky Mom, and she's going to pull her hair out. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to send it to her right after the show, like, get working. You got seven days. Homework assignment. And then she gets super pissed at me. I'm just kidding. If she's watching, I'm just joking, Mom. I love you. <laughs> You're so tough. <laughs> All right. Ugh. So before we move on to our next email, we're going to do this thing that we like to call a quick commercial break. It's just a couple ads that are going to run really fast. Here's the thing. For those of you watching on YouTube slash Twitch, we're not going to do the ads because the ads don't fucking work. I don't know why. I hate it. But that's just the way it is. So once we get it working, we'll probably start actually running You know, a spot where Robin can go find her fucking water bottle and maybe take a shit. But... And I'll be here because I don't do that stuff because I'm not gross. Shits take like 10 minutes, okay? Her shits take 30 minutes. That's a fucking lie. If you wake up in the morning at 930 and you're like, man, we should go to breakfast or do literally any activity and Robin goes in the bathroom, you're waiting a half an hour. Your activities don't begin until 10. It's because I got to check all the social media, okay? <laughs> I'm just glad it's Shut not up. a health problem thing. Um, No, it's not. It's just me looking on my phone and reading all my webtoons. I don't know how your legs don't go numb. When I used to play Tetris on my oh, Nokia no, twenty eight hundred or whatever, like my legs would go numb playing that shit after like thirty minutes. You know, I remember when mobile games used to be a big thing for me, and now I don't play games on my phone. I just read stuff on my phone. Is that maturity? No, <laughs> your tastes have just changed. <laughs> All right, let's take that quick commercial break, and we're back. All right, I'm moving into my final story of the evening, and the subject is a couple of stories, smiley face. I will say, I know the person who wrote this. I work with them. Uh, this story starts out like this. I see dead people, LOL. Well, in my dreams, anyways. It's happened a couple of times, and each time I wake up thinking, what the fuck? Why are you smiling I'm just like looking that? at your lips. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, because you don't watch the shows live, Robin had a rant about how much she hates my fucking I lips rant, earlier. I didn't rant, okay? It was just a I statement. will go ahead and point out, there is like a cult following in our YouTube chat, and sometimes in the Twitch chat, Luscious specifically lips, I for know. my lips. So thank you folks for appreciating them, because Robin apparently does not. So I'm going to get back to this email, and this next section is called Dream Number One. It had been several years since my grandmother had passed. Stop fucking looking at me. In life, she worked as a nurse, was full of life, and when she got into mischief, would make a face where she would smile ear to ear with her eyes almost shut, and we knew she was having a great time. My mom told me my grandmother always knew, stop fucking looking at me. <laughs> where else am I going to look? Straight ahead. Look at the camera. My mom told me, oh, I miss it now. Look at me. <laughs> my mom told me my grandmother always knew when there was going to be a birth or death and seemed to be a little gifted in that area. Maybe that's how she was able to reach out. One night, I go to sleep, and I dream I'm at the hospital. They tell me they have to move rooms and put me in a wheelchair and take me. As I enter the room, I look up and see my grandmother sitting upright in the hospital bed. The room was white. The sheets and blankets were white. Everything was white. There was a nurse next to my grandmother fluffing her pillow, and there was a large window with light shining directly on my grandmother. I took in the scene and looked at my grandmother, and she smiled. It was her smile. I felt warm and happy. Then I woke up. I swear it was her. It's like she popped in just to say hi. I'm good. Love you. Aww. That's super sweet. That is really sweet. Dream number two. My cousin Josh, my cousin John's wife, Pat, passed due to cervical cancer. Sorry for your loss. Cancer yeah. sucks. Hashtag fuck cancer. We went out to find, we went out to New Jersey for the funeral, and it was so sad. A month or two passed, and I had a dream. A white limo pulled up to our house in Vegas. Pat got out and came in the house, and we were all sitting in the living room on the couch talking. She was sitting right next to me. As I looked around, I kept thinking, something isn't right here. Then she slowly turned her head and looked at me. No one in the room noticed. They all kept talking. She said to me, he can't hear me. You have to make him listen. Then just as slowly turned her head back around to everyone, and I woke up. Again, what the fuck? The next morning, I see my mom and tell her about it. She called my aunt, in parentheses John's mom, and asked how he was doing. She said he was angry. He was so angry and couldn't even look at things that belonged to Pat, and he Aww. wasn't listening to anyone. He wouldn't talk about Pat or say anything about her. My mom passed along the message. Dream number three. 
My aunt Betsy, I really feel like everyone has to have an aunt named Betsy, but we also named... You're just saying that because I have an aunt named Betsy. Well, yeah, there you go. Two out of two. Nailed it. My aunt Betsy had a heart condition. She lived in New Jersey with her kids. My sister also lived in New Jersey. It was the winter just a week or two away from Christmas, and she had an issue with her heart. She needed a procedure done, and with snow likely and roads bad, if something happened at home, the ambulance might not have made it in time. I want to take a quick break for our listening audience to know, sometimes you're going to hear me or Robin laughing in the background, and I want you to know it's not because we're laughing at the seriousness of what you're describing. It's because there was a tangent that I had to edit out where Robin or I said some stupid shit that we couldn't get over, and we're cackling like fucking idiots, and then finally... Finally, we move forward, and when we move forward, I mark the goddamn thing, we start moving, and then, like, <laughs> comes in through the background. So I'm talking about this super sad thing, and I know it's going to be audible. Robin's still giggling in the background. It has nothing to do with us laughing at any of the sad things you sent us. So, good. I'm glad that's out there. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on. To be on the safe side, the doctor admitted her to do all her pre-op at the hospital. During one of the procedures, one of the doctors made a mistake and tore a small hole in her esophagus. Holy shit! They didn't realize it at first, and when they did, they didn't know how to fix it. How do you not know how to fix a hole like that? They decided to cut a hole in her throat and put in a tube from there down to the bypass hole. When they finally had a course of action, they went in, but by that time it was so bad, when they tried to sew it closed slash patch it, Things shredded and it was way worse. Holy shit. It was now two days before Christmas. I was in Houston visiting my in-laws when this all took place. I went to sleep that night and had a dream. I was in a hospital. There was a room in front of me and I saw someone in a bed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. It was my grandmother. She had tubes sticking out of her neck and I looked at her and asked what she was doing there. She didn't talk. She smiled her smile instead. It wasn't the happy, mischievous smile. It was a little bit sad, almost like she was comforting me, saying, it's okay. Then she looked past me over my left shoulder. When I turned, I saw my aunt. I went over to her and said hi. She looked sad and a little scared. I told her she was okay, that grandma was there with her, and that we all loved her. Then I woke up. When I woke up, it was 6 a.m. I called my sister in New Jersey and told her about the dream as I cried. My sister said she had woken up that morning, now Christmas Eve, and was compelled to go straight to the hospital. It was 6 a.m. in New Jersey when she got there, and she was surprised to see my aunt's son there. She asked what brought him in, and he said he tried to go home to sleep, but he didn't want his mom to be alone. He was worried that there was no one there for her. Sadly, my aunt passed away on Christmas morning, but I know she wasn't alone. That's so... Sad. Yeah, that's really sad. But the fact that everyone had this feeling you know yeah it's just i said it before i'll say it again i sincerely think that like when you're deeply connected to someone like you just get used to like their brain waves man like the signals that their body sends out that are real things when they're in distress that changes so you just kind of know you kind of get that feeling and like it's so weird that it can happen across like such long distances but it definitely is stuff that happens um it wraps up by saying in the next email I'll go over tarot card reading. The lady who taught me said I have the gift of mediumship, apparently. That's terrifying. Yeah, this was from Amanda. Thank Thank you so much for sending it in, Amanda. We really, really appreciate the support. Yeah. So that's a really sad story, too. But thank you so much for sharing it. Because there's so many people with stories just like that. Like, we've had emails from people who are, like, of all different religions. Like, literally, it's weird to say this, all over the planet, uh, who've had something like this happen to them, regardless of their belief structure. So... It just is nice to know, and it feels very real, uh, that this is something that's shared by so many folks out there. So thank you for sending that in. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Let's look over into stream chat. See what you wonderful folks had to say. All right. So a lot of people said Evil Dead is their favorite. Um, Mrs. Zilla says, you guys should watch Pure. It's a Hulu original, and it's hashtag girl power. I am in the middle of it right now, probably in the first 20 minutes of it. I started watching it today, right before I left work. Um, and she gets to watch it at work. I don't get to watch a thing. It's because I just work on my computer. I no get to one watch really my life me. leave me, my hair turn gray, my ambition slowly fade away. That's a big one. I know. I have so many right now. Oh, it's man. <laughs> fucking nuts. They're just exploding across um, my head. 
Akbar said, had to leave because of my <laughs> because of my something of a teacher. It's one of the few words Robin does not like. So oh. uh, David um, said, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a really, really good answer. Valley Grill says, thank you, Adam, for your luscious lips. Thank you for appreciating them. Fuck you. Anna says, Hades and Persephone, Greek. Yuna said, Hades and Persephone are my OTP forever. What is OTP? Um, I'm Original sorry. Transfer Protocol. That's what it means to me. McClam says, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. OTP. I don't know. Let us know. I know you're watching, so let us know. You know what does OTP mean? Vivian yeah, you says, know me. you have to read Uno Ordinary or Un Ordinary. Don't know how that's said. Unordinary? Unordinary. Sorry. Spanish oh, brain kicked up for a second there. And yeah, it's Laura like Olympus has Hades mild. Here. Dude, we were playing fucking uh, Scrabble one day. It was probably like five years ago, okay. And so it was, uh, Isle was on there, I-S-L-E, and Robin put down an M in the front and a D at the back, so it was M-I-S-L-E-D, and she's like, mild is a word, right? <laughs> and we just like looked at her like, misled? She's like, oh shit, it does say that, doesn't it? I'm like, damn, man, if you win this game, I will, uh... <laughs> I will lose my shit. Um, <laughs> Leanne, Texas says, Evil Dead. Let me know if I'm saying your name right, by the way. I hate mispronouncing people's names. L-E-I-N-A-D. And then the capital T-X can only stand for Texas. Vivian says, but I swear, fucking Apollo. Don't know what that means. Oh my gosh, what he does to Persephone. I hate him. I hate you so much. Miranda <laughs> says, my dog is listening so intently to y'all. It's so funny. I'm like, it's like, I'm like me to dog. She had... Good taste in people, or here's the dogs. LOL. That's Aww. funny. She might have heard our dogs. Yeah, our dogs like went off. Mrs. Zilla says, Adam, you should do an ASMR video eating ramen zoomed in on your lips. Oh my god. It, it'll be the most gross thing you've ever seen. Wow. <laughs> Just no. It, I don't like looking at anyone's mouth chewing or eating anything at all, let alone someone slurping noodles into their mouth. Yuna says, it's almost Christmas, <laughs> so I've been watching the remake of Black Christmas. Lindsay says, finally got here, but quick statement. Finally got here, but quick statement. But got Disney Plus and realized that 90s Disney movies are better than today's Disney movies. I could be biased because I did grow up with Not, them, but hey. I think 90s movies were way better. Cause, they were way better. Because now the Disney movies are too cheesy. Lindsay, I think we read an email of yours, by the way. We had an email that we read from Lindsay tonight. So, just saying, sucks that you came here late. Oh, Okay. Uh, I didn't read it, so... It, did you read it? I'm pretty sure I read it, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, because older Disney movies, I think, were truer to the craft. But now it's just over the top for children. And I've watched the Descendants movie uh, clips, not actual, the entirety of the movie. It was a show. No, it's a series of movies. I, I don't know if there is a show. There might be. Who knows? I don't know. I don't watch it. But it's a very popular movie series, and I get some of the songs are really good, but they're over the top. They're just so over the top cheesy. Yeah, they really are. And I can't, it, it, I can't get into it. There's a difference between the stuff I watch now, feeling like, man, I can't watch this because it just seems cheesy or shitty, and watching like The Lion King, where Mustafa's like hanging off the edge and Scar's like about to fuck his shit up. And you're like, man, I can't watch this. It's a bit different. Valley Grill says, if you reach the November goal, you should make that video. <laughs> okay. Deal. Yeah. If we can make that goal, the goal's not that big. It's $100, dudes. If we hit- I appreciate the outpouring of support you all have given us in November. Our donations have fallen off a fucking cliff. And uh, that it's, does suck. Yeah. If it's, a, it's $100. If you folks can get us to that $100 goal, we will make a really good quality video of Adam eating ramen with his luscious lips. It'll be funny. Maybe It'll I'll eat really some funny. really hot ramen. Maybe I'll start oh, out with some shit, delicious ramen. That would ramen, be really good. We'll make and then Adam do the ramen do, challenge. We'll do the eating. Adam doing the hot ramen challenge. I'm not really up for that. Robin loves that shit. I can't stand it. I love ramen. I fucking you straight up die. love ramen. But I do not like hot ramen. So, all right. So, we just have to make it $100. It's not that big. If we make this goal by the end of November, we will do it. Y'all got the rest of this show and next week's show, and that's it. So, hope you're what bringing your money while we're off? for Black Wednesday. So, if you donate while you're off, while we're off, I'll put it up there and count it. So, Nice. Go for it. Vivian says, Robin, call me crazy, but I think that when you look at Adam's lips, you aren't hating them. Wink, wonk. And wow. then three separate winking emoticons. Jesus. 
Oh, gosh. Okay. Miranda says, hashtag fuck cancer. Goofy Cure says, hashtag fuck cancer. Uh, Cat Beatrix. Oh, Mrs. Zilla says, OTP is one true pairing. Aw. That's cute. That is cute. What was the couple? I, I didn't even, I don't remember what I'm it not was. scrolling back up. I think it was All Persephone right. and whoever she's Hades. with. Hades. Oh, yes. Leslie says, so tonight's episode is so fucking funny. Oh, my fucking God. We are just so <laughs> far off the beaten path on this you episode. You know what, though? It's because we're not tired. You know, normally we're really tired. I'm fucking exhausted, Oh, dude. I'm not that tired. Uh, <laughs> Cat Beatrix says, Robin, you might like the mythology episode of the podcast Ologies. Nice. Hmm. Miranda um, said, Anthony said, damn right, Adam. Hell yeah. For those of you who don't know, Anthony is Miranda's husband. I work with Miranda and Anthony. Anthony is fucking awesome because when people need help at work, he volunteers. He goes out of his way to help and do things that... I just think it's badass. I love people that step in and say, like, ha- there's a bunch of people in the world that say, that's not my job, and there's people that say, like, it needs to be done. And people that say it needs to be done run the fucking world. So shout out to you, Anthony, because I think it's awesome. Girl. Girls also apparently run the world, according to uh, that song. So Glitch says, it's almost Christmas. How can I beat last year? Yeah, we did get a whole bunch of gifts after Christmas, I think. We did. Yeah, we got yeah, like we, five or six. Because we made a gift opening video. Yep. We did that. Yeah. You guys want to send us anything? Yeah, send please. us gifts. Please don't make it be a bomb, but yeah, we have our what P.O. box. Fuck? I said not. Please don't have a bomb sent to us. I don't want that to happen, but if you do want to send them, we have our P.O. box on our website. She looks shocked. Like, all of a sudden, I just put this idea in people's brains like, I will send them a bomb. Why do you send us a bomb? saying it? Or like severed limbs. I don't want a severed head or anything like that. Um, <laughs> Hyun Pai, or I'm sorry, Yuna Senpai said, hashtag director's cut of scarish. He said, he said, oh my God, I fucking love you guys. All right, <laughs> I'm going to keep scrolling a little bit. Vivian said, I know that story was very serious, but I kind of feel like the aunt sent out like a bat signal to her loved ones. I really do feel like that happens, man. Um, <clears throat> Etsy said, one true pairing. Yuna said, yes, LOL, one true pair. Okay, good to know. Vivian said, my mom is the loudest eater, I swear to God, or whoever the frick is I was there. just telling my coworkers today about one of the coworkers I had at the other place I worked before I worked here. And not here as in this office, but the office that I work at now. There was another intern who ate the crunchiest fucking snacks (laughs) in the entire world every single day. I've never met a single person who ate raw peppers, just whole peppers. Gross. And she would bring them in and she'd fucking eat them at her desk. And it was one cube for like four people, right? And so you just hear this fucking crunching. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah Lindsay, it totally was your email it was the one where you gave us the information on your twin so thank you for sending that in she said oh my god sorry for the pick and i can't believe that i missed it totally okay it'll be recorded in you know our youtube category and it's going to come out on friday so you'll be able to listen to it there my turn miranda said anthony and i just both laughed about the robin's lips and chew and then anthony proceeded to make lip smacking sounds it's awesome we me and my friends used to do this at high school we'd have like really quiet like classrooms sometimes and we were always somehow all in the same class together <laughs> we would smack our bottom lips as hard as we can like <laughs> <laughs> and you just like 10 fucking dudes like <laughs> And we had one teacher just snap. She's like, what the fuck is that noise? <laughs> and we're like, damn, like she is pissed. It uh, was super fun. My though. sister and I had a conversation. I think it was last year, maybe the year before that. Uh, we were going to school together at the same time. And uh, we were sitting down together in the hallway in one of, before one of our classes. But we were talking about how when it's exam time, classes are always silent during the exams, right? They're always silent, but there's always that one. There's one person who has the runny fucking nose, and you just hear that the entire time. I <laughs> and was you never. Saw, it's silence, and you just hear. <laughs> I was never runny nose guy. I was always like disturbed tummy guy. Like I'd sit down and like start like writing something. And back then, I used to be skinny, so I used to like be hungry, and I'd be like writing and doing my thing, and I'd be like. And people like look at me. I'm like, it's my stomach. And like sometimes it would sound like it was farting. Like, and they look at me. I'm like, it's inside. It's on the inside. Leave me alone. What? What do you mean? Uh, is, is it my? Are you done reading or no? I'm gonna finish out the rest of this. Okay. Uh, because I am at the bottom. Akbar said, "What is the donation goal for?" Please reiterate. Okay, we have a hundred dollar donation goal over on Twitch, which you guys can probably see at the top. Um. 
and if we get to it, I guess I'm going to do this hot He's, ramen. We're going to make it. Yeah, called. we're going to do. We're going to have. Well, Adam. No, it's going to be primarily a hot ramen challenge. That at the end, we'll do like 20 to 30 seconds of my fucking lips eating ramen with close up ASMR. Apparently, so I we've done some stupid shit for money on this show. <laughs> like I've shave a, your legs. I have shaved my legs <laughs> for like three hundred dollars. One leg was shaved. One leg was waxed. I'd much rather wax them. It lasts way longer. Hurts way more. You suck at it, by the way. Liz is way better than you. Um, you sang. You sang, I uh, sang the opening thing like for Frozen. minute to let it go, uh, which was perfect because the night we hit the goal, it was snowing outside. So we also cut it to a slow motion video of Robin spinning in circles while it snowed, which was awesome. Uh, what else? I did one more thing. I floss danced. Floss. Was it? Is it flossing when you it do that? It was floss yeah. dancing. Yep. So, all right. I'm going to read the rest of my YouTube stuff. Then you can get on to your last one. Just an example of some goals that we've met before. <laughs> Anna says, please, please don't. Nothing against your lips, Adam, but that just sounds gross. I agree. It sounds gross. Uh, Vivian says, coffee is bean juice. We are all aware of that. <laughs> Miranda says, Anthony is nodding his head and saying, fuck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh my God, no bromance, please. But he said, thanks, man. You're an awesome dude. I appreciate that, Anthony. You're an awesome dude, too, and I appreciate you, man. Uh, Eunice says, is it bean juice or bean water? Vivian says, mountains are the boobs of the earth and mountain climbers are perverts. That's weird. <laughs> turkeys in turkey are just birds these are getting really really funny miranda said robin you were so awesome anthony just laughed so hard the dogs got out of bed and looked at him like the fuck not many people make him laugh so i like you way more now robin all right oh thank you that's awesome wait what did i do to make him laugh i don't know i don't think she's funny she's really mean oh okay well, you're going to get sad. You literally told everyone watching that you hate my fucking lips. Sometimes. The first time I've ever heard you say that. So, okay. I am now done. Truth bumps. You can go ahead. Fuck you. Okay, anyway. I hate you so much right now, dude. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and think, like, what do I hate about her so I can just say it in the middle of her story? Go ahead and do your wonderful transition to our last email of the show. All right. This is going to be the last episode of the episode. And the last episode of the episode. No, huh? I said the last email of the episode. You guys heard it. In the chat, say it. She totally said last episode of the episode. I'll also play it back for you. No, don't play do it editing. back for me. <laughs> this is the last email of the episode, and it's titled Dream Story Share If You Dare. Ooh, spooky. I mean, I add that in there, but I, the share if you dare is in there. The context, I mean, I don't know if they said it in that spooky. If you context. write if you dare, you have to read it that Okay. Way. So it goes. Hello, Adam and Robin. Hello. Hello. I like that there is a mix of who they put first, Adam or Robin. Robin it used to Adam, always be you, and, and I was fine with that. And then some people were like, you know what? I'm going to put Adam first. And I was like, oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> Greetings from Taiwan. Hello from America. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Taiwan, who has apparently turned into a person and is sending us an email. My name is Thrissa. Like this, but with an R in the missile. Thrissa. In the missile. <laughs> wow. Fuck. Like this. This last email is starting out so strong. <laughs> Like this, but with an R in the middle. Thris and sa, like duh, with an S, Thrissa. And my pronouns are she and her. Hello. What up, Thrissa? Uh, I'm an American expat, which means they were Americans and now they live in Taiwan. So, I mean, that's what expat means. I did not know that. Expatriate or whatever. I appreciate you letting us know. I never would have known that. Living in Taipei, who happened upon your show on Spotify earlier this year. What, what? Shout out to Spotify. Uh, I've been, thank you. I've been living here for about 10 years now and creepy stories aside, I really enjoy getting a break from Chinese. (laughs) I'm sure it gets really annoying because I don't think they speak a lot of English in China or, or Taiwan or, or any of those. I can't imagine they would speak a lot of a language that's not exactly native to right. their country. Um, so listening to your guys' banter and keeping up on the latest English slang. <laughs> it is nice to have it's... some young people in our life to tell us all the stupid I... shit they say now. I had to tell my coworkers, who are parents... Um, one of them has, like, a 15-year-old son, so he's hearing all this weird stuff from his kids. Has a 15-year-old son and, like, a 10-year-old daughter, so he's, like, learning all these different things that they're using, right? And then the other one has a 25-year-old, so she's in that um, category where it's kind of phasing out of right. that. Um, she's going to hang on to her slang from her youth, but not start incorporating right. the young stuff unless it's ironic. But I had to explain to them what yeet was. <laughs> It's the only one I really knew for a while until uh, we really started doing the show when folks used to like start telling us. People had to describe to us what yeet was. Yeah. I still don't really get it. Vivian, but... you're young. Let us know if there's any new stuff that you haven't told us already because you're um, our connection to the youth of and America. And then one of one of our interns said oof 
to me today. Oof is not that, like, new. What's the other one? They say yikes. Is yikes um, part of it's it? It's like my old coworker, my older co not older, but she doesn't work there anymore. So she... Former. Former coworker. She showed us a whole list of the things that they say, and I was like, oh my god. Oh, that's mood. I don't like that one either. Someone, or someone um, already said it in the YouTube chat <laughs> earlier, like, Robin is mood. I don't know what that means. All right, anyway, so... So we help them keep up with their English slang, right? So it continues. Seriously, it took me forever to figure out what BT dubs meant. That's By hilarious. By the way, that's but an it's old one. But it's because BT dubs is like you're shortening W. You know, it's BTW, but we're saying BT dubs. Right. So it makes it even more confusing. Um, although I mostly listen to the pod while I'm working or doing chores, I sometimes listen to the pod with my boyfriend on road trips. Aww. Shout out Thank to your boyfriend. You. Thank you for listening to us. He- I know you're probably forced to, but we hope it's not that bad. He is from the Philippines and really got a kick out of the Aswang episode. Yes. I love doing different cultures. Oh, it's so much fun. There was a movie that I came across when I was scrolling through Netflix last night, and it was called the, oh my God, I want to call it one of those ships that you covered. Pontiac? Pontiac? That sounds familiar. Yeah. It's something like along those lines, but I think I'm going to cover that soon. Cool. Um, it goes to show you how much I truly enjoy the Aswang that... I don't call it the ass wang anymore. Oh my god, it's... what's funny is like she continues, sometimes when something happens that creeps us out or gives us a little jump, we look at each other and say ass wang. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, moving right along, not being particularly sensitive to the paranormal, I was kind of bummed that I didn't have any interesting stories to share with you guys until now. A little background before I tell you this story. For a long time, ever since I was a kid, I used to have night terrors that mostly featured evil entities and ill intentions towards me. I would most often wake up paralyzed with fear or screaming bloody murder. My parents attributed them to an overactive imagination, but as I got older, they seemed to mostly be caused by stress and bad feng shui. My parents say that about um, house layouts and stuff too. Like if, The feng shui thing. It, well, if your, fa- your house is facing the wrong direction... Um, I've learned a lot of these since meeting Robin. Like, Yeah, it's just strange things. If a road leads directly to your house, that's a bad thing, right? Because it invites in some, like... Yeah. I can't um, remember all and of And then it. it's like... Doors the- aren't supposed to line up, which I always thought was a good thing because you got a nice breeze going through your house. But it means, like, money's going to walk in and go right out of your house, yeah. right? Yeah, something just, like ah, that. So much. And, like, the house numbers. There's a certain thing with house numbers. No fours, right? Um, well, so, okay. So, my house number in Texas was the same number as our phone number was when we lived in Hawaii. I was like, what are the odds? Coincidence? I think, I think not. not. I like, I get that a phone number is six, seven digits, right? But it was like the last four digits of the phone number. Gotcha. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yep. Feng Shui. The way the room was designed or the way objects were positioned. It sounds silly, but having lived in several different apartments and living arrangements, I found that in bedrooms with good Feng Shui, I'd experience little to no night terrors. Although I'm no expert, one thing that I make sure to have is a clear path from the window to the door. This is a path for energy to flow. If your bed is in the way and cutting off this flow, it may cause some bad juju and mess with your energy. Anywho, in the past two to three years, my subconscious finally decided it had had enough and started getting verbally aggressive towards the evil entities in my dreams. I started yelling at them in a strong, commanding voice, challenging them and telling them to, for a lack of better words, get the fuck out. (laughs) It had been over a year since I'd had any sort of dream that involved an evil entity until last month. Dun, dun, dun. Is it in there? Yeah, that's there? in there. My dream was set in a house with my family. I don't recall ever seeing this house in real life, but in my dream, it was to be our new house. It wasn't long before my family started getting harassed by an evil entity in this new house. Me, being the expert on dream demons, I started to go through the motions of challenging and cursing at it. This particular one seemed to be rather stubborn and a general pain Nothing in the ass. calms a demon down like challenging and cursing at it. I mean, ask Zach Bagels. So my family unanimously... Waiting for this person to go blind. So my family unanimously decided to move to a different house. As my frightened and confused family comforted each other and began gathering their things to leave, 
I cheerfully said to myself, well, at least now I have something to write Adam and Robin about. That's, that's so cute. Um, that's my silly story. Hope it was story time worthy. If not, I hope you guys got a kick out of it anyway. You both are awesome. In a world with so much pain and darkness, it's really cool how you both offer a lot of comfort and light to your listeners. Keep on creeping on. Cheers, Thrissa. P.S. Your theme song is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. And thank it's you for nice sending you your story. Say. Um, it is definitely story time worthy. Just, yeah, you know. and I think the whole feng shui thing is is a big thing for me, at least, having grown up in that environment. Environment, yeah, where my mom was always saying, like, well, this has to be this way. You always have to have, like, a tank of water type thing in the house. So at my sister's house, we have a fish tank that has no fish in it because it's just part of the feng shui. Really? <laughs> yeah. There's, Empty fish tanks. It's. I mean, there's water. There's water in it. it. It the filter runs. There's just no fish in it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I figured they're just invisible. But they're really good at hiding. Well, thank you so much, Thrissa, for yeah, sending it in. Thank you so we much. We appreciate it. So, thank you to everyone who sent us a story this week. We sincerely appreciate you. I know a lot of these things are kind of hard to share too. Sometimes they're really funny, and sometimes they are deeply personal. So, uh, sharing a lot of yourself with a bunch of strangers is a really brave thing to do, and especially because so many people send in their stories and they say, you can read this on the podcast. And we do get messages from people. And even when we're doing things live, people like really respond to it, and people sincerely appreciate that folks share stuff that, that is that meaningful. Yeah. So, uh, I do want to thank everyone sincerely from the bottom of our hearts for everything they send us, even if it's just something silly or it's like, I had a weird dream I just wanted to tell you about. Like Everything you share is something that like really means a lot to us. So if you have a story that you would like to share... Uh, you can email storytime at scarish.com. That is our email address. You can also go to our website, which is scarish.com. You can click on contact us, fill out that form. It comes directly to us. Or you can hit us up on any of our social medias. We have Facebook, which is facebook.com slash scarish podcast. Twitter is at scarish pod and Instagram is at scarish podcast. Also, if you'd like to join our discord, discord is basically like a big chat server. And we have a bunch of different chat channels. Uh, go to scarish.com and in all of our social media links, which are on the right hand side, You'll find the Discord one. Click it. It'll take you right there. We have so many channels. We have a channel for Omen Babies where everyone posts yeah, adorable pictures their of their animals. pets. For There's... those of you who are new, <laughs> Omen Babies is something we talk about. It's something we were talking about when we were describing our pets. Yeah. We have a black cat we have a black and a black cat dog. And, black dog so... and they say like they're bad omens, but they're just the most they're loving pets in babies. the world. So it's just a way where you can share your yeah. adorable pets. Someone uh, Don't car- have to be black. Uh, yeah. Carly... Uh, one of our OG spooky friends she created who created the Discord. The Discord yeah. um, she posts pictures of her cat, one of her cats that walks her daughter to the bus stop every single day. It sits next to her daughter and waits and for the, the bus with cat, her daughter. And it's the cutest cat. And oh my goodness. I love the Discord so much. There's so many memes and... <laughs> we have a channel called Not So Spooky Memes because they're not related to anything we spooky or paranormal. We have a channel called The Cornfield and it's just all corn memes. <laughs> It's weird, but it's really fun. If you'd like to join it, it's a great community. We have a mental health checkup channel where we can just talk about stuff when you're going through something rough, which a lot of people take advantage of and even more people use to support each other, which is just an amazing thing. Um, so, And we also have an artist channel for those of you who draw yeah. stuff, just like Robin and folks that like to share their art. It's really cool to see the different styles and the way people like grow. Someone's yeah. been posting since we started, and they did a side-by-side comparison it's of something that they've really drawn cool. a second time. Yeah. And it's like, wow, man, like... Like we're actually watching someone's art develop over right. time. It's really cool. It's super awesome. If you want to join it, we encourage it. Again, scarish.com. If you scroll down on the right-hand side, there's a little icon for every social media we have. And I think the Discord one is a picture of a little ghoul or goblin. I don't know. Just mouse mm-hmm. over them. It'll say Discord. No, that's Snapchat. So either way, <laughs> whatevs. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for supporting us. Speaking of support, Robin, if folks wanted to give us that money, we how have, can they do it? We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash scariest podcast. There's a whole bunch of different tiers. We've been getting a whole bunch of new patrons lately, uh, which is we are so thankful for. Um, I am. I, it makes me so happy because without the support of you guys, we really couldn't keep this going. We couldn't sustain it. So thank you so much to everybody. There's a whole bunch of different tiers. Um, you guys can check it out. Patreon.com is a scary podcast. I think I already said that. And then we have one-time donations at coffee, K-O-F-I dot com slash scary podcast. And those are one-time donations. I mean, you can also donate um, when you watch our live streams. Uh, every week, Wednesday. It pops up and lets everyone know, so-and-so donated this much money. Like, Triple Seven, um, who donated $6.90, said, I missed <laughs> you guys in the message because they always donate a 69 reference. And Brittany, who also donated $10 during our live stream. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, 
Yeah, ko-fi.com slash scariest podcast, one-time donations. Um, your donations go to help us upgrade our studio setup. We would not have been able to purchase this new computer we've been able to run everything off of uh, without your help. I mean, Ulri was a big component of that for sure. Ulri, Glitch, everyone who donated, yeah. Connor also donated. Yeah. It's, it's really nice to see so much support for folks who really want us to do more and more. And we're getting to a point now where, like, we're really looking into bringing an Xbox into this office so yep. we can start doing Silent Hill. And I'm really not excited about it because yeah, we're gonna I don't do, like scary games that We're going to try to do horror game streams. So, Yep. We've been talking with some folks about some other streams as well. I'm really excited at the growth we're about to experience because uh, it's going to be it's going to hit it. Just it's going to be me. So that was weird. But yeah, Justin Timberlake and I say thank you so much for listening. So uh, go ahead and sign us out. Keep on creeping on and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.